everyone, the message you are about to watch is a message preached by Bishop Opu Deli Eze. This message is packed full. It's that it is anointed, it is fire-rised, it is loaded, and it has the capacity to put you on your throne of enthronement. I want to encourage you as you watch this message, watch it with faith in your heart, because God will impart some great measure of anointing in your life. Yokes will be broken, chains will be destroyed, walls will crumble as you watch this message. I want you to watch it with faith in your heart and trust God that every situation in your life will turn around for good in the name of Jesus. Amen. Happy New Year. Hosea chapter 6 verse 2. Let's read together. I want to go. After two days, he will revive us. Are you ready for revival? And on third seven super Sunday, he will raise us up. Are you ready to be raised up? And we shall live in his sight. What a word. Prophetic. All right. Melekumbai. John chapter 11, 39 to 44. Lekombubu Shabianas. Hello, Baha. Let's read together. I want to go. <laughs> the river is flowing. Let's read together. One to go. Jesus said, Take you away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead. Said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinked, for he had been dead. How long? <laughs> All right, let's read 40. One to go. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee? That if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory. How many of you are ready to see God's glory? 41. I love the word of God so much. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was led. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee. Say it again. Can you say it again? You can imagine thanking God in the midst of dead situations. Father, I thank thee that thou has had me. He has not prayed. He has already answered. He has already started thanking God for answered prayer. Are we missing the principle there? Okay. 42. Like a mass choir. And I knew that thou hearest me always, son. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. 43. And when he had thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, do what? Lazarus, do what? Say, Kai. 44. Uh-huh. And he that was dead came forth. Bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, One to go again. Father, we bless you, we honor you, you remain our God. Blessed be your name forevermore. And the saints of God in Zion heritage will shout. Somebody that still loves the Lord will shout. Please be seated and God bless you. I want to speak to us briefly on the subject, giving life to your dead situations. How to give life to your dead situations. Like I will always remind us, the Bible is replete with sacrosanct anointed injunctions that has the intrinsic ability when assessed to cause you to live on the earth as if the devil is not in existence. From the belly of the revelation of God's word, is hidden multiple, multifaceted, complicated, many sided workings of divine intelligence that, when a sense empowers your spirit to flame like fire 
and your life to become the commonest expression of dominion on the cosmos. So it becomes pertinent that upon deeper perusal, we should be able to enter into the loins of this coded body of intelligence and begin to cause them to bear upon our life, bear upon our destiny, bear upon all that we do and upon all that we represent. From where we took our scriptures, we saw God in flesh. Now let me remind you, God is not a man, but he became a man for the purpose of man. So Jesus is God in the flesh. He was 100% God and 100% man. But while he lived on the earth, he stripped of his self of divinity and lived like you and I. But as a matter of fact, he lived as our example and showed us the pathway of eternal glory. So, that is to tell you that all that Jesus did upon the face of the earth is available to every man that will yield himself to God and you become a living practical witness. Can I tell you something? The earnest desire of this world are not waiting for the explainers of God. They are waiting for the revealers of God. You know what the Bible called them witnesses. Who is a witness? A witness is a man that has a living tenable proof in the court of law or in the court of public opinion that cannot be doubted or argued. So for you to be a witness of Christ means that you are a living testifier of the functionality of the effulgence of his glory that comes from the realms of his power and transformation that has occurred in your renewed spirit. So we are not just called to be teachers and preachers. We are called to be living witnesses that Jesus came to the earth. He rocked the earth and he died. And after three days he was raised. And right now he is at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. Lift up your hand and shout, Lord, I'm a witness. Say it like you mean it. Say, Lord, I'm a witness. The Bible said it came on a particular day that the Bible says, Jesus, the one that thou lovest is sick. Now the question is, when what thou lovest dies, what do you do? Everything that Jesus did in the scripture is a device that two, three biblical patterns that must be replicated under proper scriptural exegesis and guidance. So therefore, Jesus had in his crew a young man called Lazarus and Lazarus died. The Bible is implying there are things you love, there are things you've been blessed with, there are things that carries the definition of who you are. What do you do when they die? When it looks as if your business is dying. When it looks as if your purpose is dying. When it looks as if everything you've been called to is dying. A dear body of divine intelligence and access to supremacy of light that we can be able to impart on it in order to transition it from the realms of death into the realms of life. The Bible said Jesus came to the place where Lazarus died and he prayed he gave thanks and we saw from that same place where Lazarus died by the efficacy and by direct application of a body of revelation and intelligence he that was 
died four days again, jacked up to life. Hosea said, on the second day, there's a probability of us being revived. But you see, on the third day, there is something about resurrection on the third day. And this is the third seven super Sunday. So I came as a messenger from the throne of grace to tell somebody here, your Lazarus has been in the grave for four days. But this is the third day, the Kairos time, when death things are giving life to when the situation hear the voice of God the Bible said the hour will come and yes this is the time that those who are dead shall hear the voice of God I shall live again if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the grave if that's the spirit dwelleth in us that's the spirit shall quicken our mortal body ladies and gentlemen my assignment is defined I prophesy to you now anything that represents your Lazarus that's been dead for ages that's been dead for years as you say amen they receive life I said they receive life lift up your hand and shut my Lazarus is receiving life I don't like the way you're talking say my Lazarus is receiving life say my Lazarus is receiving life if you believe in what you are saying, wave your hand and shout Zoe. Say it again, say Zoe. So Zoe is the kind of life that existed in God made available in his son. So that he that has the son has the life of the father. Look at me, the access to God kinds of life is access to son. So if a man received the son invariably, the man has received God kind of son. Was it the reason why John said, if you are here and you do not have the son, you are not of his. I for somebody here as I'm preaching now I see graves I see graves opening I see graves in your father's house in your mother's house where they have buried your destiny where they have buried your glory where they have buried your star there is a commandment from on high this is the third day they are not permitted to stay one more day I therefore prophesy as a man who has stood before God's presence every demonic grave every shatani grave every witchcraft grace every manipulative grave that has housed your glory cage your star as I hear your powerful amen they are releasing them I said they are releasing them I said they are releasing them I said they are releasing pain. Kata, I said they are releasing pain. I said they are releasing pain. Somebody shall fire. Somebody shall fire. Who is he that serves a pain? And it comes to pass. Lazarus, you are permitted to be in the grave for some time. Lazarus, you are not permitted to be in the grave all time. There is a spirit from the Father. The spirit is a life giving spirit. When it comes upon the tripod, it makes the tripod to be a living practical army. My God. I feel like prophesying. Shatakata mianaka. Ito barakatania katoba. I speak to your destiny. I speak to the glory of this commission. We cannot be buried. We can be buried. I speak to every witchcraft grave, every demonic grave where they have hidden your Lazarus. If you can say a better amen, the graves are opening now. Resurrection is taking place now. Can you jump on your feet and shout a better amen? Never again. Never again. On the second day, he shall revive us. But you see, on the third day, he will raise us. Seventy of you whose amen will remain fire rise, you are being raised to the next level. Amen. If you sit down, you are missing this moment. I said, You are being raised to the next level. Amen. 
He said, for I will give you the keys of the kingdom. That whatsoever you bind on the earth shall be bound in the heaven. And whatsoever you lose on the earth shall be loose in heaven. For example, there are keys that governs external, eternal, multiple, unusual, supernatural dimension of God's coded knowledge that is hidden in his world. Somebody shall give me the keys. I don't like the way you're talking. Say, give me the keys. Oh, what are you doing? Say, give me the keys now. I can hear you. Say, give me the keys. Can you screaming like a mass choir? Say, Lord, give me the keys. Can you throw your hands in the air and say, Father, give me the keys. And I will give you the keys. I'm about to give you eight keys. Are you ready? How can I give life to that situation? How can I resurrect my Lazarus at will as often as I desire? How can I become literal, manifest, life-giving agent? That whenever I appear in dead climes and situations, I supply life. Jesus said, for the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life-giving. I am not a life-taker, I'm a life-giver. How many of you wants to be a giver of life? Come on down. You want to be a giver of life? That when you pass every day situation, they check back to life. Come on, if you say amen, the anointing rests upon your head. What are the keys you can deploy to give life to dead situations? Number one, you must be connected with God in deep fellowship and sacrifice of alignment. You must be connected with God. Kelabai Kotai. You must be connected with God in deep fellowship and sacrifice of alignment. John 15 and verse 5. The Bible says, For without me you can do nothing. In John chapter 12, I think verse 24 until a corn of wheat falls down and die. So, number one key to give life to any day situation is that you must be connected in deep fellowship. The Bible said in the book of Psalms, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For you to be a life-giving personality, you must learn how to glide and to rule the dimensions of the earth from the authority realm of God who is our life giver. Jesus was a man that operated on the earth and he operated, he said, for it is the Holy Spirit that is in me that doeth these things. He said, my father, is in me and that what he first of all is the holy spirit said so i go of, of my own accord i cannot give life to this situation but by dependency on the functionality of the god within i'm able to do this number one key maintain unbreakable solid fellowship and sacrifice of alignment aligned to his passion aligned to his will aligned to his desire and everything that is dead shall be quickened say amen to that number two lift up your voice and prophesy without fear because the dead bones are there to encourage you that now you are down you aren't gonna rise again the dead bone are there to remind you of the failures and the pains of yesterday the dry bones are there to prove to you the possibility of God abandoning you in the valley of indecision. The dry bone is there as a reminder of faith that failed in yesterday. 
No wonder when you were asked, can this boss leave? You said, I don't know. Because your faith has been touched. Your faith has been bamboozled. Your faith has been, uh, has, been, uh, has, been, has been attacked and harassed. But you know what? One of the ways God has instituted our mouth to be a weapon of life giving operation. Look at me. Everything that God did on earth, he did it through the practicality of the mouth. Excuse me, sir. Your mouth was not only configured for the eating of a wetu amala, a gusi and uh, ofo anubo. Your mouth was sculpted to call the not as if though they were only if thou can say to this mountain be thou be lifted and be cast into the sea the bible said and thou shall have whatever you say he said you've not received because you have not asked he said come let us he said ask me and i will give you the nations as an inheritance i pray for somebody here lift up your voice and say prophesy Say, my father and my God, I prophesy every dry bone in my life. In my life, receive life, receive life, receive life, receive life, receive life. Receive life. Receive life. Receive life. Amen. Amen. One more time, lift up your voice and say, prophesy, prophesy. See that. Lift up your voice and prophesy without fear. Fear is false evidence appearing as real. They don't have real foundation. Can I tell you something? Everything I was afraid of while growing up never happened. I don't know who I'm talking to. So I, I, I found out that fear is one capital way through which devil paralyzes divine initiative. False evidence appearing as real. Honey, I want to tell you, they don't have real foundations. Go there, push the walls. They will fall. Am I communicating? I don't know who is David that is about to rise. To conquer the fear called Goliath. Maybe you are coming from the generation where they say nothing good comes out of your family. But do you know that the, the generation is waiting for the manifestation of somebody that will say, If I perish, I perish. I pray for somebody here. May you be the hope of your family. Amen. May you be the hope of your family. Amen. Lift up your voice and shout, I prophesy. I prophesy. We don't prophesy because we are comfortable. We prophesy because we believe. We having the same spirit of faith according at his reaching. We prophesy and thus we prophesy. For when men shall say there is a casting down because I'm a prophesying personality, I will say there is a lifting up. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the living God has risen upon you. Throw your hands and shout prophesy. Professor, <laughs> I, I learned something from Ezekiel 37 and John 11. When Jesus got to the tomb, instead of raising prayer point, he prophesied, The Lord, I thank thee. Hi, Jesus Nababa. He summarized the prayer before he began praying the prayer. He said, Lord, I give thee because thou hast had what kind of what kind of prayer is that? That is calling the be not as if though they are. And the Bible said, immediately Ezekiel began to prophesy. Suddenly, born connected to born. Hey! Can I tell you something? I don't care how batter, shattered, scattered. They have scattered your vision, scattered your life, scattered your money, about scattering your ministry. But by the new 
room of the spirit the bible said the wind blows where he listed thou hearest the sound and thou knowest no he goes so that is the man that is born of the spirit look at me they have scattered you they have frustrated you they have hindered you but i speak by the power of the holy ghost anywhere they have shattered you anywhere they have patted you anywhere they have scattered you heaven will gather you again god is gathering you again you shall grow again you will expand again you will live again your voice will be heard again throw your hand and shout professor i professor wow I repeat this after me say i prophesy i am alive i cannot die i am on top i have become the topic i shall not die small my men shall not be few i prophesy i am the definition of god's glory on the earth i prophesy no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper i prophesy I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am seated above, never to be come down. I am lifted, I refuse to be afflicted. I prophesy in the name of Jesus any death situation in my life, in my ministry, receive life, receive life receive life receive life Amen. lift up your voice and shout i prophesy i prophesy god bless you lift up your voice and prophesy without fear for the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life number three provoke the dominion of your faith yes provoke the dominion your faith is your dominion and with it men conquer the earth shut the mouth of lion and have their children saved are you hearing what i'm saying say so i will provoke the dominion of my faith of my faith now you have this faith doesn't make things easy faith makes things possible as many as they are believe all things are what are possible Am I talking to somebody here? Am I, calling, am I talking to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13? For you to establish the dominion of life on earth, you must express the dominion of your faith. You say, we're having the same spirit of faith. Do you have the spirit of faith? The church, do you have the spirit of faith? So we're having the spirit of faith according as it is written. I believe and therefore have I spoken we also believe and therefore I speak Luke chapter 1 I think verse 45 blessed is she that believe because there must be a performance of those things which we are told her from the Lord your own is to believe God's own is to perform so you won't do the performance and do the someone said my own is to believe you know what i'm seeing a mighty army is rising out of this meeting this morning from your driest places oceans of glory will flow if you believe me and you know when anointing is in the service rise to your feet and shout a better amen amen so provoke the dominion of your faith put your faith to work put your faith to work it doesn't matter what you see what matters is what god has said what is faith faith is the response of the recreated human spirit to the efficacy of god's word i take that again what is faith faith is the response of the recreated human spirit to the efficacy of god's word so faith is beyond mental assent faith is practical corresponding action in the direction of your expectation practical corresponding action 
in the direction of your what? Expectation. Somebody shall sell her. So you must establish the dominion of your faith. Number four. Become a carrier of God's manifest presence. Become a carrier of God's presence. God's presence is everywhere. But God's manifest presence is not everywhere. The Bible said, what LSD that thou fledeth from the God of Jacob. The Bible said that the mountains saw them and slipped like ram. And the sheep saw it and they skipped. So what LSD thou that thou runnest? nothing transforms and brings life to this situation like becoming a mobile carrier of God's mobile presence. Acts chapter 10 of verse 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil because God is with him. Put your hands on your head and say God is with me. Someone say Emmanuel. Hey, come on, say it. Say, Emmanuel. God is with me. Say it again. Say, Emmanuel. God lives within me. Someone shout hallelujah. So, become a carrier of God's manifest presence. This enables you to carry a very flexible, mobile atmosphere and climate that anywhere you go, you superimpose your climate. Have you ever read where Jesus went into that man's house, I think the Jairus house where the daughter was dead and he saw a company of professional mourners. You know what he did? He said, please get out of this place. You know what he was trying to do? He's reprogramming his atmosphere. He wanted to cast away the atmosphere of doubt and bereavement and recreate by faith the atmosphere of supernatural and everlasting supernatural operation what am i trying to say someone shout i've got my atmosphere come on sing it like a song say i've got my atmosphere i will deploy my atmosphere i don't like the way i say i've got my atmosphere so i will deploy my atmosphere help me beat somebody by saying hey release your atmosphere anywhere you enter they should say when I was younger, I used to go and thief my father's elope. If you know the elope of early 90s. So each time I want to go to school, I'll go into my father's and, and press perfume. So anyway, they say, the people that my father's friend, my father's friend, they say, you smell like your father. I said, why wouldn't I smell my father? I created the atmosphere of my father. I use what my father is using. So I'm smelling like how my father used to smell. I go to where they do business. Say, ah, you smell like your father. I said, hey, now. Hey, hey. You know, they didn't know what I did. I went and took small. If you know a lobe of 90s, a lobe, I don't know if you know that. For if you press it on a wife, it will damage the wife. If you press one, 21 days you are covered. I'm telling you the truth. Not this one they're doing now. Once, 21 days, even if you bath and, and you sponge and sponge your body, you don't go anywhere. <laughs> So, sir, I hear you. One more time, lift up and say, I carry my atmosphere. When you see us sing, Oh, Elunduru Vigiani, Yeye, Shinaku, Uruzuni, oh, Shani Bana. You might not understand what I'm saying, but I'm trying to create my atmosphere. <laughs> hey, let me tell somebody create your atmosphere. Nehu, 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 nehu. Ishinagiyana, e sono no biyagada bohosa. And they say, what is that man saying? But I preach. You don't know what I am doing. For by flesh shall no man prevail. I am engaging the supremacy of an unseen deity who rules in the atmosphere. The 
there is God that rules above the template of the cosmos. When I do my thing, I engage divine assistance. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. We are connect my help. The prophet said, Is there not a mystery here? They said, There is a mystery. So bring him. Let him change my atmosphere so that I can prophesy. Lift up your hand and shout power. Power. Look at me. You don't need permission from me to create your atmosphere. Just know what works for you and connect with it. If it's a man, it's easy, easy. Oh, go, 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 go. And you give them their chance. And the angels are saying, we, we, we had something. Who is calling us? Where did they have them? Who goes there? Put your hand upon your head. Emma Mania. If it is tongue, keep speaking in tongues. But we are building ourselves in our most holy faith. Praying in tongues. Somebody shout atmosphere. Atmosphere. Create your atmosphere. They said nothing is working here. It's not, not on my own when I'm here. You don't know what else to say. Lift up your hands and say, Kakato Kata. What are you saying, sir? I said, Riti, Titi, Titi. So, are you okay? Arika Tomaha. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. Greater is He that is in us. Say, so He that comes from God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh. Someone shut up and overcome her. Am I preaching good? Number five. Engage in strategic warfare, prayer, and fasting. Isaiah 66 verse 8. How do I give life to this situation? I will prophesy. I will speak life to my dry bones. I will lift up my voice. I will not look at the things that I see. But I prophesy the things I believe. As I keep prophesying, suddenly there will be a shaking. There will be a gathering. Someone shout hallelujah. Look at what Isaiah 66 and verse 8 said. Who had had such things? Who has had such things? Shall the earth be met to bring forth in one day? But Zion gave birth in one day. It has never been prayer. Prayer. Eh? Prayer rearranged rearrange pattern. And made what's supposed to happen in nine months to happen in one day. Do you know that the birth of Jesus was made possible by the prayers of men on earth? Until eight men prays, heaven doesn't respond. The Bible told us prophetess Anna and the priest Simeon, who we are in the, uh, who we are in the temple, they were praying. They were leveraging on the prophets, on the prophecy. Lord, you told us that the Messiah will come. Where is he? Is he not? We call him forth. Some say we call him forth. So it was, it was even the prayers of men on earth that quickened the process of Jesus coming to the earth. No wonder Apostle Paul told Timothy, 1 Timothy 1 verse 18, that thou mightest warfare with the prophecies which has gone ahead of thee. Prophecies are not instruments of personal welfare. Prophecies are instrument of personal warfare. Have you tell somebody your warfare determines your welfare? You know why men, most followers develop what I call the contempt for the prophetic? You know why? Because they think that prophecy has its own power to come to pass. Yes, there is the sovereignty aspect. We are God, says it till it comes to pass. But majorly, the edge is a place of partnership between God and man. Am I communicating? So you must partner with God in prayer. I say, Lord, I'm not going to rest until my expectation becomes my manifestation. Say amen to that. 
if there's any mantle that I carry now put your hands I want to pray for you Father I duplicate my prayer mantle I duplicate my prayer mantle let everyone that is here may there be a fresh baptism in their prayer altar Amen if you desire it and you are hungry to see a revolution in your prayer energy, stand to your feet and shout a better amen. Amen! So shall I hear you? The next one is uh, number six. Dream again on a higher dimension. Some say I will dream again. Some say I will dream again. Do I have dreamers here? Do you know that the world belongs to dreamers? Do you know, look at me. Physical man sees with his physical eye. Spiritual man sees from his mind. Sees from where? Anything possible in your mind is possible in your life. Therefore, create the imagination. Now, the word imagination is a, is a combination of two compound words, image and nation. So when the nation you rule is created by the image you embossed. Am I communicating? I said it's physical. There is more to seeing than meets the eye. Am I communicating? We that are faith threshold, we see from the governance of God and his word. We see from the template of what God has instituted within our subconscious. We see from our mind. That is what we call the be not as if though. When I was growing up, I had a problem with God. Especially in the prophetic. I noticed that most of the times, when each time God speaks to me, he speaks to me in the past tense. It took me years to come into terms with the personality of God and his thinking paradigms and his operation. So it was when knowledge came that I realized that God is not a man. To eternity, he's not a man. Did you hear what I said? But because he operates in time where man dwells, so each time he speaks, he speaks as if he's speaking to himself, expecting man to latch up to his level so that man can operate as God man on the earth. That is why for you to rule the earth, you must be supernatural. You must be what? I don't, you must be what? You can imagine me. I came into Abuja seven years ago and I came into this bush. When they were seeing Tatar row bushes here, I saw a city. Some group of people that came with me, their faith failed them. But we are not moved by what we see. We are moved by who we are and by what we believe. And I was, it was from this altar that I kept prophesying that a day will come. They will, how many of you remember? That they will tie that road from that junction to here. When this place was in the midst of nowhere, I invite people to church. Say, Papa, you are anointed. But the road there, I said, What road do you? But one day, because worse has been, worse has gone ahead. A man who lives here, who has waited with the federal government, used his influence and brought this road. Because prophets somewhere, has prophesied. Now people envy us. How did you how did you get this property? You had the midst of the city. I said, uh -huh. But when I came here and saw it, it didn't look. But the God said to me, This is the place. Spiritual. I pray for you today. May your faith break into a new dimension. If that amen sounds nice, it will break every barrier in your life. Let me tell somebody, dream again. Repeat this after me. Say, if they are not comfortable with the first dream I shared, relax. I am coming back. I'm going to show you another dream. This one will cause you hypertension. You see this one? You have stroke. Oh, I show you little things when I didn't have it. Say, I showed you little things when I didn't have enough faith. How, Kwano? Say, how, Kwano? Now, faith. Don't learn. I am going back to God. I'm about to dream again. I'm, I'm about to sing again. I'm about to preach again. I'm about to build again. I'm about 
to buy the house again i'm about to marry again i don't know what the devil has done over your dream hey god sent me to prophesy from where you are rejected from where you are bound and limited you will rise again you will dream again the bible said and joseph dream yes another dream satan you think you can stop me but i'm rising like an edifice i am unstoppable no power can stop me somebody shall dream dream i'm already dreaming of a flow i'm already dreaming seven overflowing services Look at this. Genesis 15. God told Abraham, From where thou art, look up. What? It's not when you get to where you are going. From that place where you are, look up. And they looked unto him, and their faces became radiant, and they were not put to shame. Looking unto God, the author and the finisher. Come on, tell somebody by your side, look up. Look at me. You don't look up when you get to Asso Rock. You don't look up when this place is filled. Right now, in the midst of scarcity. I've got no person to help me. Then the Lord is saying. My members have deserted me. They hate me. But the Lord said, hey, look up. They say, I don't look like it. I've got no background. But the spirit of grace is saying, look up. From thou, where thou look up. If you can look up, you can go up. He said anybody in this house that is looking up now. I don't care what they said yesterday. But you are looking up to God. You are my strength. You are my deliverer. You are the governor among the nation. Father, from where I am, I look up. I look up to you. Someone shall I hear you? I hear you, my father. Am I preaching good? Yes, sir. Number seven, provoke the mantle of your prophet. Second Kings 4, 32 to 36. The prophetic mantle. Yes, number seven. The prophetic mantle has power to give life to that situation. Hosea 12, verse 13. He said, By the hand of the prophet, the children of Israel were delivered from Egypt. The hand of the prophet, they were preserved. The prophetic mantle, when appreciated, celebrated, honored, has capacity to give life to dead situation. Somebody say, I connect to my prophet. I connect to my prophet. Finally, I will pray. Number eight. You know, the way this is the sweet us. We forget we have second service. Number eight. Learn the art of thanksgiving. John 11, 41 and 44. When next you take a visit to the house of your Lazarus, even if you don't have any other thing, don't lose your thanksgiving. Your thanksgiving can make your life full. Thanksgiving is a lifesaver. Jesus God, show me that scripture quickly, I'm rounding up. Jesus God told the tongue, the Bible said, and they took away the stone from the place. God, I can preach, I can preach so many things from the place. Where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I do what? You know what it means? When next Satan paints the picture of things that are dead, close your eyes and look up to God and say, Father, I thank thee. Rise to your feet. Is that how you're celebrating God? Somebody shout. 
I believe you've been blessed by that word of enthronement that came your way. Solidly in my heart, I believe that your life will never be the same again. In case you're out there, you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, quickly I would like you to chant this prayer. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you, I come to you, a sinner, a sinner, I confess, I confess, from today, from today, I receive you, I receive into you, into my life, into my life, as my Lord, as my Lord, and personal Savior, and personal Savior, never to sin again. Never to sin again. Congratulations. Amen. You are now sanctified, blood bought, and anointed for exploits. Amen. I want to speak specially to those who listen to the word of God. I declare by the mercies of God yes. that every yoke of limitation in your life is broken. Amen. I speak that the land where you are will not deny you your treasure. Amen. I declare when it is your time to be blessed, it will not be negotiated. Amen. I decree by the mystery of the word of God, yes. may you have access to divine inheritance. Amen. I declare healing to your body. Amen. I declare fruitfulness to everybody's situation. Amen. Receive grace for financial empowerment. Amen. Go and excel. Amen. Subdue the land. Amen. Manifest to me. Amen. In the name of the Father. Amen. And of the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you for watching the message of enthronement. And I believe that miracles are already happening in your life Hallelujah. right now. Hallelujah. Once I encourage you to follow us on Facebook and on other social platforms. You can see the links scrolling on your screen right now. And the headquarters of the church is located at Zion Heritage and Miracle Ministries of Voice of Nigeria Way, Lue Airport Road, Abuja. And we have uh, so many other branches. The branches and their addresses will also be scrolling on your screens right now. So stay connected with us and remain lifted for life.